My name is Jill. This is Survival Road Rules, and we're going to do today just a little bit different. But I started with the question that uh, I see all these montages, you know, where people get their three years of trailer prep done in three minutes, and it makes me feel a little inadequate and like, why is this all taking so long? And I know other people have talked about that too. But it really got me started and thinking about when did this all begin for me and how long has it taken? I came up with 30 years of concentrated effort, but it actually started way before. This is what I found out when I started looking at it a little more closely, trying to answer my own question. But before we do that, we're going to take a deep breath. Inhale, hold for four, exhale for four. We got cats and dogs. See you on the other side. <laughs> glitter fairy wand. My darling Jill, I'm so sorry that I could not come to you on the lawn tonight, but my little Jill, it is not yet time for you to come to the castle. I was a girl. There are no schools in the castle and it is very important for you to go to school and learn how to read and write, which clearly I'm having trouble with here. Then when you're older, I will come for you and your prince. That's why girls are so screwed up. And we will leave to the castle and live happily ever after. Until then, be happy in your home with your wonderful family, for they love you dearly. Your, gold, your good fairy. How cute is that? But clearly it started when I was very young. The next thing I remember is my brother bringing home a group of Australians. For some reason, I don't have a picture of all of them. When I was consolidating the trailer, I was tossing out pictures. I have no idea what my thinking process was with the pictures that I have left. But here's two of them. I only look slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> the one guy on the left uh, the dark hair guy, he wanted a green card, so he decided he was going to try and, uh, I think, marry me at that point in time. Not going to happen. But anyways, that got the bug planted somehow. My brother then went to Australia. He hooked up with them. And then I took off to Europe. And that wasn't uh, till I think it was 1987 was when I left for Europe. And I uh, took this black backpack. For the life of me, I can't remember where it ended up. You can see that picture here. And I backpacked for three or four months through Europe. It was a really interesting experience um, at that time. It just sort of opened up a whole new idea and world for me. And when I came home, I had no intention whatsoever of going back to a real life. I was going to get some more money, pick up, and leave again because I had never really intended to travel permanently. Um, but life happened. I got a job. I got responsibilities. I got, you know, stuff happens. In this world Twenty four years later, <laughs> in two thousand and nine, uh, something snapped in me again and I uh, started planning on leaving. You know, I knew I was going to let my house go. I knew that I didn't have a plan and I cannot remember what made me think I need to buy a trailer. I must have seen somebody else do it because at that time in California, lots of people were losing their houses. And so I bought this trailer. It sat on my deck for a year. Uh, I decided I would sell it. I put a floor in and I decided, okay, I don't want to do the trailer. I'm going to sell it. I had several people say they were going to come buy it and never show up. 
took that maybe as a sign. Uh, winter hit. I kind of gave up and said, okay, well, I'll just hold on to the trailer. I don't know what's going to happen next. And then that spring is when my foreclosure notice came through and I had to do something. And that's when I got busy fixing up the trailer. And it took me uh, about four months. I started in March. There was a long snow break where I couldn't get any work done. And then I was uh, packed up and ready to go and I left in the middle of August in 2011 really with the intention of leaving for just one year fast forward 2017 here we are again <laughs> What happened next was I think it was about 2015 when I made the decision that uh, I was going to stay and continue to live like this and that I would get a second trailer to fix up and that would be more of my permanent home but I still wanted something else that was small that I could travel in. There's actually a trailer across the street that's a 35 foot trailer that I first he told me I could have and then when I went to try to go get it he had changed his mind um, and that's when I found the horse trailer and I had decided on the horse trailer because I wanted something that was sturdy that could really hold up on these back dirt roads because I still am fascinated with rural lifestyle I don't really have a desire to do hardcore traveling I like to be out in the country and the horse trailers are really designed for that and we've seen such an explosion of creative housing in uh, the world these days so that is uh, all that came together and that I will convert the horse horse trailer. Ironically, it was here in this tiny little town. Uh, I was looking at them for probably six, eight months. I didn't even have the money to buy one. And so I uh, just saw it one day out of the corner of my eye and I had this flash like that's my trailer and two weeks later I found the guy and was dragging it home. Uh, it's uh, He gave it to me for a really good price and so then here is the same thing, and I used to bring two horses in the back time there, and I bring two up through here and turn them around backwards like this, and they do it, and then when then I put two across here, you know, and here you had the smaller horses I put across here, you know. Yeah. So how many first places did you win with your haul well, year show horses? You didn't see you didn't see all them ribbons. I did, <laughs> but how many first places? Who well, I don't even remember. It's been so many years now. But I used to win. See, when I started showing horses, they wouldn't let me in the shows. I know. You know, I could bring them, break them and train them, but I couldn't ride in the shows because I was black. You know, see. That was all my money. I think at that point I was down to zero dollars. But uh, that's how we got here. And so now it's uh, been a, almost a year and a half since I had the horse trailer. And I still am not very close to getting it done. But uh, my fingers are crossed that soon we will be moving forward on that. It's part of uh, this process and that's really why I wanted to make this video was because it's so easy to feel like uh, everybody else is getting it done really quickly but the truth is is sometimes it's fast and sometimes it takes a long time and you know when I started off with this original question how long does it actually take me or where did all this stuff come from I really hadn't put the pieces together. That's what was interesting about this particular question that I was exploring. Um, I never thought about it, but I've always had this running away thing. I always have. I'm very loyal to people. I have zero loyalty to places and to objects and things. So it's, a, it's been an interesting journey, both in this little tiny video and also in the bigger picture. So I hope you have enjoyed this little tiny snapshot into that question, how did all this stuff get started? And uh, how I really have come to this conclusion that it's not just uh, something that I'm doing, it's really a lot more about who I am. And I guess maybe that will help you answer that question. Are you that too? <laughs>
I never knew what this feeling was inside me that was driving me. And you know, maybe now I do. Maybe I can name it. And that name, this moment, is road culture. You going somewhere? You can't get very far away from me. That is the bad part about being in a tiny This is my one place in the world. Because I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love them way more than they love me. 